just realised I should have got you, Peg, to bring a live demonstration for us this morning about this reading about the sheep and the goats. Um, that would have mixed things up, wouldn't it? Apparently, Middle Eastern flocks still run mixed herds to this day, sheep and goats together. And apparently they all look pretty much the same. Woolly, brown, quadruped ruminants looking for their next hit of grass and bleeding about it all day long. How do you tell them apart? That's the thing that the, re the story raises. How do you tell them apart? They look so much the same. But Jesus says to him, it's pretty straightforward. Now, the question is, does this mean the Messiah is from New Zealand? Surely I think not. Jesus can tell who's who in the zoo by how they react to his own family, particularly his most vulnerable brothers and sisters. Jesus had already told his mates, people he named brother and sister, how their world was going to come to an end, how their lives would be made hard, how they'd be beaten up in church, run out of town, arrested, unfairly tried and even executed all because they knew him here again jesus sees a time coming where his brothers and sisters would find themselves hungry and thirsty homeless naked destitute and even in prison because they know him jesus the sovereign ruler of all will take their treatment personally. Although it was a sober acknowledgement that hard days were ahead as Christians sought to establish outposts of the empire of heaven here on earth, rejected by their own people, rejected by their own religion and its institutions and surrounded by an indifferent, derisive and at times violently hostile multicultural Roman world, this is first and foremost a word of great comfort and hope, especially to the early church. Jesus takes their suffering and hardship personally and their comfort and their joy personally. They do it to you, they do it to me. You are not cannon fodder. You will experience hard days horrendous days but you are not cannon fodder you are family we are family what happens to you happens to me it's a word of hope that their suffering and hardship would not be in vain sometimes people ask why is life so hard why am i suffering as a christian but it turns out their suffering is an opportunity the salvation of those who treat them with kindness and dignity they may never hear the story of Jesus but in loving his people they will find their salvation this word from Jesus is also a word about justice and vindication there will be an accounting for the treatment of his brothers and sisters when this age is brought to a close and the new world opens up into being. And there's some that will miss out. The things that Jesus is saying here in this passage didn't come out of nowhere. It's an extension of the promise that the father made to Abraham. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. Jesus' parable in this reading today and his interpretation of it continue to be a word of comfort to the church around the world that particularly finds itself beset by grinding poverty, by persistent opposition, indifference, derision, discrimination and violence. What is done to them is done to Jesus. He's judging the world by how it treats you, his church. And on that last day, you will be his measuring rod, his dividing line for humanity, for those 
of us in the Christian faith. We are Jesus' judgment rule, his rule of thumb for figuring out who's who in the zoo, how they treat you, how they treat the church will sort out whether they are sheep or goats. So, the atheist or communist or Muslim or Hindu or Buddhist or whoever that treats even the most humble and seemingly insignificant Christian with kindness and dignity will be doing it to Jesus himself. They will be his sheep. That's pretty generous, isn't it? And opens the gate very wide indeed. There are a lot of people amongst us who like to think that God judges the human race on whether we believe exactly the right things about God and say exactly the right things about him. There are a lot of people in the church who think if we say certain magic words of confession about Jesus or not, will determine whether we're saved or not. And there's a lot of anxiety being generated in the church and argument over this stuff. But you know what? The religious leaders of Jesus' day had that same attitude and that same fear. And when Jesus didn't conform, what did they do to him? They crucified him. Of course, that doesn't mean all religions lead to God. They most certainly do not. But Jesus will judge the world that lives in ignorance of him by its treatment of his brothers and sisters. How people treat you really matters. How people treat his church in those seemingly God-forsaken outposts around the world really matters. Of course, the first best hope for humanity is for them to hear the good news of Jesus, to do a U-turn back to our Father in heaven, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and truly come alive and join us in transforming the world for his glory, to join his family, the church. That's where fullness of life is. But for whatever reason that they can't, or don't hear that good news, this is the bottom line. Whatever they do to you, they do to me. Secondarily, this is a pretty good summary of what Jesus is on about. We might fall into the trap of focusing on this parable as though it's all about the end. It is about the end, but it's not all about the end. It's about how the here and now as well. Because what we do here and now really matters. For us Christians, this becomes a handy little guide for how I treat others and where I might look to find King Jesus in the world around me. Because of our privileged position as brothers and sisters of the ruler of all, we might do to others as we'd have them do to us. I think we've heard that one somewhere before, haven't we? It's also a warning to the church, a church that finds itself wealthy and with few real worries or obstacles. We might be in danger of acting the goat. Don't forget back in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus did say there will be plenty of people carry on singing and dancing and praising his name and at the end of all things he'll turn to them and say, I don't think I know you. Today is Christ the King Sunday, a day instituted by the Pope early in the last century to remind the church that mean and selfish politicians do not rule the world, that dictators do not rule the world, that governments and financial systems do not rule the world that war does not rule the world and that tyranny and fear and oppression do not rule the world. Jesus rules the world and his reign is extraordinarily gracious and generous beyond anything we could ever possibly 
imagine or allow in our own hearts. Jesus says to you today, whatever they do to you, my brothers and sisters, they do it to me. Amen.